Hey everyone, my name is uh, Sunny Wyoming. Most of you know me as an actor in Taiwan, China, Hong Kong, but today I am not an actor. Today I am an ocean conservationist, and particularly a shark conservationist. So I'm going to tell you guys a story, a very, very simple story. Um, it started with Dizzy and I, my wife. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for being here. Um, we had a dream. We were on social media, we're looking at, you know, IG, FB, and we see all these people in beautiful long fins just diving in the ocean with these beautiful sea creatures, uh, whale sharks in particular. Uh, in the beginning, we were only focused on whale sharks. And, you know, it led us to wonder how they got all these beautiful photos and videos. So a friend of us said, you have to learn free diving. And we're like, oh, free diving, what's free diving? So we actually go and spend a lot of time and money and to take classes, go all over the world, go to islands, learn free diving. Why? Because we wanted more likes and we wanted more comments on our IG. I mean, we did it for the gram, okay? And, and that's the truth. We did it for the gram. And why? Because you, you'll see what I'm saying. So we practiced and practiced and Look at that. I mean, how is that not a beautiful photo? And, and I'm hoping that you guys will like that. And that's what I wanted. And that's what we learned. We learned free diving. We took beautiful photos. We went all over the world. And then the next objective was to find a whale shark. But before that, you know, we're trying to dance underwater, still trying to look pretty, still doing it for the gram. And this is what all we wanted. But we went to go find some whale sharks. And then you know, we realized that these sea creatures were so beautiful and we also realized that our free diving really worked and we got really good footages just like this. And then basically, I was just like, wow, these sea creatures are so big. And, and I was like, what is the next step? Well, my next goal was to go find some great white sharks because these are really peaceful creatures. And I guess when I was growing up, I was watching Jaws and all these shark movies, and then you see it in the media. People are always scared of sharks because of shark attacks. You know, they're, they're trying to bite people, they're trying to attack people, they're trying to kill people, and fear consumes us. So social media kind of gives you that extra edge, and I'm just curious, and I really wanted to see great white sharks. And then, so where do we go on our honeymoon? I was like, baby, I really want to go see great white sharks. You want to be adventurous and uh, go on a cage diving trip? And she's like, yeah, let's do it, because why? We're adventurous and we're gonna do it for the gram. And that's what we saw, you know, and I was, I was blown away at these beautiful creatures and they were powerful and, and fierce. And then everyone basically told us, you know, we're going on all these shark trips and diving trips and everyone was saying, um, hey, you guys are really lucky. And I'm like, what, what do you mean we're lucky? They're like, you're lucky you're seeing sharks. And I was like, really? We're lucky? Why? I mean, 73% of the world is covered by the ocean. That's their home, that's their territory. There's like over 6 billion people on Earth. There, there must be hundreds of billions of sharks in the ocean. And they're like, actually, you're wrong. You guys don't know what's going on with the state of the ocean. You guys don't know what's going on with sharks. And that led us to asking questions. And when you don't know the answer to questions, what do you do? Well, you try to figure it out. You, go to school or you read books and you try to learn from the internet. But what we did was we wanted to go find experts. We wanted to find marine biologists. We wanted to find people who were dedicating their lives to doing shark research and ocean conservation. So because we we're quite lucky, we got to go to Hawaii for work. And we actually met two of our big idols, Ocean Ramsey and Juan Sharks. They are also frequent TED speakers, but they've been dedicating their whole lives to protecting sharks in the ocean. And they've been a big advocate and a big voice in the shark community. So when we met them, they're just like, actually, we can coexist. But before I tell you about them, before I teach you about them, I want you to dive in the water with just a bunch of sharks. And I was like, um, OK, not in a cage, right? And they're like, yeah, not in a cage. So basically, you know, I jumped in the water. I took some videos. And this is what happened, and I realized that they're gentle creatures, and they were beautiful, and they were amazing. And they have a soul, they have a life, they have a mind, they have brains. They think. They interact with each other, and then there's a whole ecosystem with, with sharks underwater, and they, that is their home. So every time we enter, that is their home. Just like on land, this is our home, we got to take care of it. But herein lies the problem and the sad truth to a lot of things. 
Um, before I get into the sad truth, they told me that while I was learning that we need sharks in the ocean. They belong there. So let's not take them out, but we need them there. Why? We need them because they maintain a healthy ocean. They kind of clean up the ocean. They remove the weak, they remove the sick. They keep a balance between competing species and they keep the carbon cycle in motion. So what happens if we start taking sharks out of their own environment? What happens if we start just removing them from the ocean? And which is already happening. So that is the scary part. And that's what led me to learning about sharks. So the loss of sharks actually promotes ecological shifts and it could damage a whole healthy ecosystem under there, including the corals. And because there's actually a life cycle, the cycle, everything is connected. So if you take one thing out, one thing is missing. The cycle won't go on. And that's what's dangerous about it. And here's just some shark facts. When I was learning more and more, you know, all the studies and the facts are that we take about 100 million sharks a year by choice, what we want. Why? Because of the shark fin trade. I know this is Asia. We grow up eating shark fin soup at weddings and special occasions. But because of shark fin soup, we kill about roughly 100 million sharks per year. And we kill them, humans. But there are reports that it may be upwards of 273 million a year. So if you think, if it's around 250 million in four years, that's a billion. You do the math. That's pretty incredible. And it's crazy. But why? It's mainly because of shark fin soup, shark fin trade, a lot of herbal medicine, and also cosmetics. It's actually in a lot of cosmetics. And I know a lot of people don't know that, but it is. And the biggest thing is the fisheries and bycatch. And what's going on with the state and the ecosystem of the Marines is that a lot of overfishing. So if you're overfishing tuna, there's not much left of everything else to fish. So a lot of the fisheries, they're just kind of grabbing whatever they can get and whatever they want. And just another couple of facts here about deaths per year. And I took this off a couple of uh, other speakers um, back in 2015, they created a new category for causes of death, which is taking selfies. I know that sounds really ridiculous and funny, but people are taking selfies because of technology and you doing it for the gram, you know, like we want to do this. So you're taking selfies, you're not aware of your surroundings and then boom, you fall and there's an accident. Um, if you think about it right here, elephants kill about 30 people a year, but sharks, they only kill about on average of five to 10 a year. And it's usually an accident because they think that you're part of their food source. They don't mean to do it, but you'll never actually hear a shark eating a whole person. Yes, you may die from a big shark bite because maybe your veins are jugular or something. You know, it's, it's, it's a big wound. And if you're not gonna press on it, and if you don't have a tourniquet at that point in time in the ocean, which not a lot of people do, you may die from it. But we as humans are not a part of their food chain. And then that led me to doing some more research locally. This may be a little graphic, just to warn you guys. And I just took my friends to uh, some of the uh, fishing ports in Taipei, around Taipei, I'm not gonna say where. Um, this is an endangered species right here. And they're doing this because of the shark fin trade. There is no right or wrong. They have a business, they have to make a living. It's part of the economy, I understand that. So I interviewed them and I wanted to know are you specifically targeting sharks? They said, no, because there's not many tuna left. They're like, well, there's tuna farms, but we need to fish and we need to make money. So whatever we can catch, by catch, we bring it in and we sell it at the fish market. So I'm just like, okay. Okay, it led me, led me to more questions. Maybe ecotourism one day. And I wanted to show this. This is also in Taiwan. We have the biggest great white sharks around Taiwan. Six meters, that's six meters. That is huge. I'm only 188. This is ridiculous. And it's so rare and they're all females. And inside they caught one later, uh, earlier this year and there was 15 pups in there. And why? Because they just, they needed to make a living. I don't blame them, but they needed to make a living. 
Another cause of a lot of detrimental stuff going on in the ocean and a lot of deaths caused is garbage. Uh, I just wanted to t briefly touch on this topic because there is a lot of garbage and it is caused by us and it's affecting the ecosystem. And this is firsthand experience. You know, you have turtles that are wrapped around by ropes, which shouldn't be there, nets. And then this center photo right here is actually a piece of black garbage bag. And uh, my partners down in the Philippines, they found a baby dolphin that was beached. And then it passed away. And they asked marine biologists if they can do an autopsy. And inside, they found garbage. Marine life doesn't create garbage. We create garbage. So what I learned was, from all the negativity, I still must try to stay positive. The ocean marine life is really beautiful, and we have a responsibility. You know, we got to do something about it. We got to try to protect it. And if certain species become extinct, it may lead to huge detrimental changes in the ocean ecosystem. Eventually, it could affect our everyday life. And how? Like, the air, the weather. I don't even want to get into global warming. That's a whole separate topic. But everything is connected, trust me. And, and the water, the temperatures are rising. There's more, there's more microorganisms in there. There's more diseases that could happen. It's just, there's just so many changes. So we have to protect it. And I feel like conservation is the only answer. Conservation is a balance. We all got to try it. I'm going to get into that. So by spreading more awareness through influence, now that's, that's how we start. That's why we're here today. And I think TEDx is brilliant. You know, we're spreading more ideas around and I'm glad to have this opportunity. And it's gotta start from somewhere. It can't just start from everyone. You gotta make changes in life, but you gotta know why. You gotta understand why. Because it can affect our everyday lives. And they visited Taiwan on our behalf and you know, we have give talks and everything. And, and I do this quite often, just to try to change your perspective on sharks and on the marine life. And uh, we also have a lot of beach cleanups. Garbage is a big problem everywhere. So this is something that my wife, Dizzy, and I, we've been trying to do more beach cleanups around. And every time we go back, there's even more garbage. But we feel like at least we're making a little bit of a difference in the community. And then this is what Dizzy and I have been doing the past uh, couple years. Um, we started um, sea turtle hatcheries because turtles are also on the endangered species list. So we kind of reallocate the baby eggs and then we put it in a hatchery about two months later when they're born, we release them. So we're kind of giving back. So these are all the little things that Dizzy and I have been trying to do on our path to learning about the ocean and the ecosystem and how we can help. So what can you do? There's a lot, actually. It's about your lifestyle. It's about the choices that you make. So the first thing is recycle. Okay, that's very simple. We learned this in school. Reduce, reuse, and this is very important. Refuse single-use plastics. A lot of places are banning single-use plastics, and let's just keep that in mind, okay, in your lifestyle, choices that you make. Maybe take some public transportation or join conservation groups, volunteer beach cleanups, I mean, we have one every other month, so you guys are all more than welcome to participate. And educating the youth. And I think that's what's most important through social media. And this is where I'm making changes myself. Instead of just doing it for the gram, doing it for the likes, I'm doing more talks, doing more speeches. I'm hoping that my influence will really educate the youth. So, I guess the last couple of years, yes, I'm still enjoying life with my wife and we've been going around, but you know, I'm still diving, but I'm just appreciating all of these marine life creatures because I don't know how much time they have left. I don't know if 10 years from now, if I want to take my kids into the ocean just for a snorkel, if I'll ever see manta rays or sea turtles or sharks. And believe me, sharks are not that bad. They're, they're not going to just go and attack you. You know, I, I do a lot of shark diving. I still think that safety is important. You have to be really, really safe and you have to be cautious and you should go with experts and, and master divers. They'll tell you what to do. They're the experts. But I think it's a good experience just going in there and learning that we can coexist and learning that that is their home. 
just like this is our home. If someone wanted to just come and invade, we're not going to be very happy about it. So I've been living by a new motto. I'm not here trying to force you guys to change your entire lives. I'm not here trying to brainwash you. I'm just telling you that it's the choices in your life. It's choices that you make every single day. And it's about taking what we need and not actually what we want. And I understand that the economy must go on, the fisheries must go on, and they're part of our food source. But I think that there must be more regulations, must be more people speaking out, and I think that we need more advocates. And if every single person can just make a little bit of an effort, together we could really make a big difference. And this goes all the way back to what I was in the beginning of my journey. I was trying to do it for what I want. I wanted the likes, I wanted the exposure, I wanted everything, I wanted more fame. But then this path took me onto a journey that I learned so much more. And it's so much more meaningful now because I'm about to have a kid and I remember my father telling me, he was diving like 30, 40 years ago too, and he was saying how just around Taiwan, you go in and you can see all these sharks and it was beautiful. Now, every time we go to Liuzhou, Green Island, Orchid Island, you, you see nothing down there, not even nice coral. So it's quite sad. So I want to do this not just for myself now, I just want to do it for the next generation. So I think, I hope um, you guys will take something away from my speech. I hope that it starts resonating, even just a little bit. It may not resonate tonight or tomorrow, but maybe when you're sifting through your garbage, you're trying to organize everything. You'll do some recycling. And I hope that maybe when you go to the beach next time, if you see some garbage, just pick it up. You know, if you go to a wedding, maybe just say no to shark fin soup. Every bit counts. Thank you, guys. I'm Sonny Wang.